In the previous video, we examined the energetics of chemical reactions. We saw that stable chemicals will not readily react with one another unless energy is added to the system. What is this energetic input called? That's right, the activation energy. You can see that term right on the slide. If I want to start my gas barbecue, I'll open up the valve to allow a flow of propane from the tank. And then I'll click the starter to generate a spark, or I'll light a match. The energy from the spark or the match is enough to get propane molecules and oxygen molecules to move fast enough to react. Once they do, propane plus oxygen will produce carbon dioxide and water. Is this an endergonic reaction or exergonic reaction? If you said exergonic, you got it. The light and the heat of the flame are forms of energy that are liberated. While cells don't generally burn propane for energy, they do use other stable molecules, like sugars and fats. It would probably be unhealthy for a cell to have to light a match each time it wanted to have one of those stable molecules react. So the cell needs another method to get those stable molecules reacting. That method is called an enzyme. Enzymes are proteins. As with all proteins, enzymes have very specific three-dimensional shape that is held together largely by hydrogen bonds between amino acids in the protein chains. Part of that three-dimensional structure is a pocket called the active site. The active site has specific shape and size and charge pattern that's just right for binding the reactants of a specific chemical reaction. When an enzyme is involved, we say that the reactants are the substrates of the enzyme. Well, when a substrate molecule fits into the active site of the enzyme, what happens next? If you said the enzyme will change shape, you're right. That shape change is a very specific shape change. It creates torque on the substrate that causes the substrate to be broken down if the reaction is a catabolic reaction, or it brings substrates together to build a bigger molecule if the reaction is an anabolic reaction. The products is or are produced and is or are then released. The enzyme then springs back to its original shape and is then ready again to catal catalyze another one of the same chemical reactions. Notice some enzymes catalyze catabolic reactions, other enzymes catalyze anabolic reactions. To catalyze means to speed up. Enzymes don't perform chemical reactions that wouldn't ordinarily occur. Enzymes just make reactions go faster. The way they speed up or catalyze chemical reactions is by acting as specific mechanisms to perform those specific reactions. The right tool for the right job. Just like the correct screwdriver makes it easier and therefore faster to drive a screw than if you tried to turn the screw just with your fingers, the correct enzyme will cause the uh, chemical reaction to occur with less energy input than if the chemical reaction were to occur randomly. In other words, the activation energy is decreased with an enzyme. The red curve and red dot show this. Enzymes are essential for the chemical processes that cells rely on. Cells are made of stable molecules that don't readily react. That's the basis of homeostasis. If we were made of very reactive molecules, our bodies would degenerate into a mess of random chemicals. That stability of our molecules means that chemical reactions won't occur readily, unless we have the correct enzymes to catalyze those reactions. So why is organism X capable of performing a chemical reaction? It has the correct enzyme to catalyze that reaction. Why is organism Z not capable of performing that same reaction? It doesn't have the correct enzyme. This reliance on specific enzymes is important for us. Let's say we want to try to treat a bacterial infection or a cancerous growth. We'll want to find a target that the bacterium or the cancer cell has that our normal body cells don't. That target might be a bacterial or a cancerous enzyme that our normal body cells don't ever use. Well, how do we attack that enzyme? One way that we could target an enzyme would be to introduce a chemical that would fit into the active site of the enzyme but not be a substrate for that enzyme. That is, the chemical would sit in the active site and wouldn't allow the, subst the actual substrates to bind. 
This chemical is called a competitive inhibitor because it competes with the enzyme for the active site and therefore reduces the enzyme activity. Another way that we could alter an enzyme's activity would be to introduce a chemical that would bind to some other site called an allosteric site on the enzyme. An allosteric site is anywhere other than the active site. Well, what happens when another chemical binds to a protein? The protein changes shape. And in this case, the shape change alters the active site. If the alteration changes the active site so that it cannot bind substrate, then the enzyme won't be able to catalyze its reaction. We call this allosteric inhibition. This is shown on the left side of this picture. In some natural circumstances, an enzyme is in an inactive state until a chemical binds to an allosteric site. And the shape change of the enzyme opens up the active site and the enzyme begins its function. This is called allosteric activation. This is shown on the right side of the picture. This picture shows two important concepts. First, we see a sequence of chemical reactions, each catalyzed by its own enzyme. This is called a metabolic pathway. It's like an assembly line, with enzyme 1 producing the first intermediate, and enzyme 2 converting the first intermediate to the second intermediate, and enzyme 3 converting that to a third intermediate, or maybe the end product, as is shown in this picture. If any of the enzymes in the pathway don't function properly, then the pathway will get bogged down at that point. In the case of feedback inhibition, that bogging down might be a natural part of the regulation of that metabolic pathway. In this picture, the end product shown on the right is, is an allosteric inhibitor of enzyme 1. As more and more end product is produced, enzyme 1 and 1 is more and more inhibited. This causes the shutdown of the metabolic pathway when enough end product has been produced. Cells perform and regulate many metabolic pathways. In the rest of this chapter, we'll investigate several of them. We'll start by connecting the familiar things we eat to the more hidden chemistry that powers cells.